Similarly, we can use the formula for a sub k in order to figure out the value of a sub k. Now, again, based on that formula, what we can do is we replace the period t with 2 pi for this example. And furthermore, we can break up the integral from 0 to 2 pi. That integral from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi, that integral can be broken into two integral. The first integral going from 0 to pi, from 0 to pi, the first integral going from 0 to pi, and for that range, the function f is defined as t. The second integral will be going from pi to 2 pi. And for that range, the function f of t is defined as pi. Again, if you take a look at the first two integral on the right hand side of a sub k, it could be easily integrated. And after we integrate it, both integral and evaluating between the lower limit and the upper limit, we can calculate the constant a sub k. And that involves basically, like I said to you, the evaluation of the first integral and the evaluation of the second integral. The second integral is very easy to get it. And the first integral, basically, you can get it because it is in the form of the integral from 0 to pi of u dv. And using the high school formula that we learned before, that integral is equal to uv between the lower limit 0 and the upper limit pi minus the integral from the same limit 0 to pi of v du, right? Well, in this case, obviously, we define u as this guy's t. And we define dv as cosine of kt dt. Okay, so once we define u and dv that way, then we can evaluate that integral very easily using this high school formula that I just described to you. All right, let's see. So after we do those integration, we can see the formula for a sub k can be easily calculated after you do the integration. However, keep in mind that in that formula, even after you do the integration, you still have the index k in the picture. You still have k index k in there. And so, basically, after that, you just let k go to 1 or 2 or up to the value of 8. Therefore, we can calculate a1, a2, a3, up to a8 very easily. And that is shown on the next slide. As you can see, the value a1 is calculated. When you let k equal to 1, then you let k equal to 2, we can calculate a sub 2. Similarly, we let k equal to 8, we can compute a sub 8. So, in conclusion, the periodic function that is given to us, f of t, can be expressed according to the Fourier series as I indicated in the first equation on these slides. On that first equation, remember, we already calculate the constant a sub 0, and we also already calculate the constant a sub k and b sub k. Well, in this case, we don't let k go from 1 all the way to infinity, but instead we just calculate k go from 1, let's say, up to 8. All right? And the answer for a sub k from 1 to 8, k, k from 1 to 8, 
and the answer for b sub k, k go from 1 to 8, we have already computed before. So now, let us try to take a look at the Fourier series again. As you can see from the first equation on this slide, the summation on k, it can go from 1 to infinity. Obviously, the more value that you use for this summation, the more term you use, the more accurate answer that you will get. And therefore, we want to see what happens if we use only one term of the Fourier series. That means k equal to 1. When k equal to 1, f of 1 is given by this formula from the Fourier series. When k equal to 2, we want to compute the summation of the Fourier series with two terms. So this is the first term, just like before, above that. And then the second term of the summation sign involved with this term. And similarly, if you want to compute four terms in, in the summation series, we can figure out f4 is equal to the first term, we consist of this. The second term involved with this. And the third term is right there. And finally, the fourth term is right there. So, in fact, we already plotted the function f1, f2, and f4. According to the graph, you can see the horizontal axis is t. And the vertical axis represents the function. Now, as you can see, the more term that you use, the more accurate that you will get. So you can see the function f4 should be very accurate. That function f4, as you can see on the on the graph, that function f4 actually is this term right here. This is, this is the plot of the function f4. Now, if you remember, in this particular case, the exact periodic function f of t is something like this, the red, the, the red line. So even though we use only four terms in the Fourier series summation, the function f4, which is shown on the green curve over there, is already fairly close. The reason that you see on the graph, on the, on the, the green curve, there's a portion that looks like this, is because the actual function, there's a jump look like this one. So you can see the green curve is fairly close to the exact periodic function, which is represented by the red curve over there, even though we use only four terms. And that's the end of this lecture. And the acknowledgement.